welcome back again so today we are going to learn how we can deploy our first application uh, using kubernetes and the application will be spring application that will deploy on kubernetes cluster uh, if you need like a, entire detail step by step process you can follow my blog and then you, here you will get entire each and every step required to deploy your first spring Boot application on kubernetes uh, for this lecture we are going to use many kube cluster uh, for the deployment of kubernetes ports and services right. let's go and check if my clusters are in fine or not so once i'm going to use mini kube status let's check all right so everything is stopped now so i'm going to start it so that we can use it for our application My mini cube cluster is ready, so I'm just gonna quickly check if it is everything up perfectly fine. Mini cube status. Okay, so I can see everything is running fine. So I can go ahead and deploy my Kubernetes application. So before that, just wanna check how many nodes we have. So I, for that, I can try kubectl here. Get nodes. So it's a single node cluster as you can see and that's role is master which is running on machine uh, in this single node cluster we are going to deploy our first application so uh, for this for this lecture i'm going to use docker image which is available here basically this is nothing but a spring boot dummy application which is going to be pulled during the uh, during the kubernetes deploy so I, I checked, may I tried many studios, everything is running fine. So next step is to create namespace where I'm gonna deploy my uh, application. So let's create a namespace called CS demo. So I'm just gonna paste it. So kubectl create namespace and then namespace name. What namespace you can, it's up to you, whatever you want to use. All right, so it's, it's created namespace CSMO is created now in this name says I can go ahead and create uh, ports and services different kind of kind which is there so for that first we, we are going to create a manifest file uh, for this deployment so first is my deployment file which is going to use the image CS exploration and the word tag is latest so, and that it will write into a deployment.yml so i copy this and then paste it so i'm going to create a deployment name is cast demo with the image is this and then i'm saying put it into deployment yaml so don't go and create it so dry run please don't go ahead and create it just create a schema file all right so deployment file is ready if i go ahead and open it uh, you can see that all the all the tags are already available and then it is pointing to right container next i'm going to create a service which will expose the pod so let's create a service i'm going to use port 8080 for the service and okay all right ignore you can ignore the one in for now okay my service and ports are ready so now I, I, I can go ahead and you know create deploy these files so create the pod and then later then create the service copy to create service okay uh, now let's go and check if my everything is deployed correctly and uh, they're up and running 
so I can say get all and the name space I need to give is yes, demo. So you can see my demo power is running fine, service is also running fine and everything is as expected. You can check the logs if you want to see kubectl logs in the port name and then same space name. Test demo. Oops. Oh, sorry. Yep, the application was started. The log is actually thrown here. So this is, if you know Spring Boot, this is a Spring Boot log which is coming up, coming here. Okay, now let's view the screen bit. So I know that my applications are running fine. So now next step is to expose the endpoint so that I can access it on the local host. So for that I'll uh, I'll do the port forwarding of service case demo on 8084. So before that let's try whether 8084 is working or not. So curl localhost 8080 slash actuator slash help. So you can see that it's not right now reachable but we'll enable the port forwarding and then we should be able to access it. So port forward is enabled so on the next window I'm going to use curl and see if I'm able to access the actuator or not. So curl localhost ADA actuator and help. Okay perfect. It's coming up and status is up and then everything is working fine. You can also put it in the browser and see if you get the same result yep perfect we're getting same result here all right uh, that's it for this lecture guys hope you like blog link available in description so do like it thank you for watching bye